Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at out here on this fine Monday. Hope everyone's uh, having a great start to the work week out here. It is the Earth Master. Monday, June 16th, 2025 is the date. 11.55 a.m. local time out here along the west coast in uh, California. Latest activity shows a 1.2 across the area of Texas out in the oil field. Surprise, surprise. Also, some movement uh, just off the coast here of Canada. That's towards the northern end of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. A four-pointer stirring up out there. I was just checking this out on the map. Looks like it's uh, just shy of the Cascadia, which runs right here off the coast of Vancouver Island ranges here. That uh, four-pointer coming in earlier this morning. Got uh, a little bit of activity stirring up here across the northern end. Uh, lately and you can see it quite nicely on the um, Canada map here quite a few earthquakes across the Pacific and the North American plate boundary some stretching across here as well that line of activity marks where the Juan de Fuca plate and the little Explorer plate uh, tend to separate tend to have a little separation there there's actually three individual plates that make up the Juan de Fuca plate as a whole you got the Explorer plate up here where that earthquake activity is stretching across the Juan de Fuca plate, the bigger of the three, and then the Gorda plate down south here. That is stirring up north and some activity down south here as well across the uh, Blanco fracture zone. This area, number of earthquakes yesterday and last night. It looks like they maybe had another one here just before midnight. 2.8 earthquake. Uh, that movement here looks like it's adding further strain in this general direction to the south into the east southeast area so watch the cascadia subduction zone the southern end um, could see some trimmer activity elevated underneath this area today when we check it well we'll check it later tonight but the trimmer counts normally don't come out until about seven o'clock here um, i'll show you guys the trimmer map from yesterday most of that was up north just off the vancouver island or underneath the vancouver island ranges here that's down into the deeper areas of the subduction zone of the Cascadia and a little bit down south across Northern California. But this should be amplified today due to the, the um, strike slip boundary earthquake activity that's striking there along the Blanco fracture zone. That should add strain, uh, which should increase the tremor counts out there throughout the day today. So we'll check back on that a little bit later on this evening once we get uh, the tremor count updated. Uh, through the Pacific Northwest, handful of smaller quakes. Nothing big going on there for now. Same for Oregon, Northern California, a little spotty. But uh, with this activity stirring up overnight, I wouldn't doubt it to see uh, maybe an increase in movement here across the Northern California area. Right now, not a whole lot showing up there across Northern California. And, of course, it goes offline as soon as I want to look at it, but that's okay. Uh, one earthquake there around San Francisco. Looks like right underneath the bay here. A 1.5 just off the Hayward Fault. One earthquake there on the Hayward Fault from last night. Actually, that's this morning here, it looks like. A little 0.8. Nothing big going on there through the bay area for now. Across Southern California. Let's go ahead and go back to this other map so we can see a little bit better where we're at. Uh, Southern California, a little spotty as well. Only one earthquake above 2.5, and that's from yesterday there across the area. For Irwin region with a 3.2 earthquake. Aside from that, general small microquake activity out here uh, prevails today. <clears throat> really nothing big going on. But again, you know, one of these days we're going to wake up and hear about a big one. It could happen at any time. Up in the uh, Idaho area, a couple earthquakes uh, ramping up, it looks like, in the last 24 hours. 2.3, the latest, 2.30 in the morning. That uh, still brings a... Brings the total tally up here, at least in the last 30 days, to 229 earthquakes with no main event out here. Uh, there's various magnitudes, but no main quake sequence. These could be uh, aftershocks from the 6.5 that struck out here in 2000, uh, 2020, I believe it was. Uh, but they're off of the Sawtooth Fault System here. Nothing showing up here on the Sawtooth Fault System yet. That is capable of producing up to a 7.5 and uh, quite a bit of time has passed since we've seen a big earthquake on that sawtooth fault system uh, also some strain that was transferred off of this area to the east here these are strain transfer quakes indicating that uh, you know pressure is building up in this area there was a little separate swarm over here to the east with a bunch of threes they did have a 4.3 in there as well uh, but watch the sawtooth fault system i think that's fairly well primed here for some big earthquake activity we've covered that in the past 
And uh, the last one was oh, 4,000 years ago. Previous to that, it was 7,000 years ago. Or but previous to uh, today's date, it was 7,000 years ago. So it looks like sequence of events happen between three to 4,000 years or so. And, well, you know, here we are 4,000 years from our last big 7.5 out there. We could be looking at some larger activity on there. Got to think about that. We, You know, there's so many fault systems out here that slowly accumulate strain over thousands of years. And, you know, nobody's heard about a 7.5 up in Idaho, but it's possible uh, they've uh, studied this fault system quite um, in depth, and there's really the possibility of some larger activity in the in the near future. I think Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there on the map, but uh, let's go double check that, see what we have up in the uh, beautiful area of northwestern Wyoming. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening out there for now. Uh, should see some more thunderstorm activity and some wind. That's what showed up along these seismograph stations there from yesterday in the dark blue reading but aside from that uh, really no earthquake activity happening out there it looks pretty quiet there there's the oil filled earthquake activity ramping up today around pecos texas and the southern portions there of new mexico there's quite a few oil fields out here and uh, there's you know not only on the satellite view but they have them listed up here on the google maps just uh Lots of oil fields out there, so that means the North American plate is on the move, on the crunch, so to speak. So watch, uh, watch the area out here. Normally, when the oil fields kick up, things really start to ramp up across the West Coast and inland as well. Uh, New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. One earthquake over here around Hopewell, Tennessee, this morning. Actually, last night, 2.1. All right, take a look here at the global scale of things. The largest activity. In the last 24 hours goes to a, well, very small 5.0 around the Tonga area. Earthquake activity very minimal as far as large events go here in the last 24 hours. Uh, so far after midnight, a 4.9 down here across the southern East Pacific rise. That uh, has been a little hot spot of activity here recently as well. Seen some movement out here uh, yesterday in the last couple days. That should stir things up here along the South America area. That's actually been happening here it looks like today uh, 3.9 across the Chile area one of the latest quakes there on the globe also some movement up north along the Peru area uh, New Zealand nothing major going on 3.4 southern end of the Kermadec Trench deeper quake uh, still lacking activity here around Vanuatu and the Fiji Islands area for now but I'm sure that will fill in like I said just uh, somewhat of a minor to moderate day of earthquake activity so far really nothing of any major movement it's still early though i mean it's only noon out here across california so things could could get interesting be, between now and uh, tonight's update uh, 4.2 out there across the it almost like looks like it's around the santorini greece area so let's see what we have there across that region of greece Looks like that larger movement's up north here a little bit. Here's a swarming region around the Santorini volcano and the Colombo Seamount out here. Uh, earthquake activity, yeah, it's, it's still been consistent here, but in the la last week or so, we got 100 earthquakes. Nothing compared to what we've seen here months ago with hundreds and hundreds of earthquakes per day out here. Uh, but the last one looks like a 2.5 over here across the swarming area just outside the swarming area around Santorini, Greece. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, we can double check the seismograph station views here. This is the um, around the Santorini, Greece area. This is going to be today's date right here. A couple smaller localized earthquakes as noted there on the seismograph station at Santorini. All right, uh, see what else we got around the globe here. Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet. Iceland uh, starting to see some earthquake activity out there. Could be getting close to an eruption around that region as well. It's been a little while since I've checked that map, so let's go see what we have going on across Iceland today. As far as earthquake activity goes, a little movement up north here, 3.7, along with some swarming going on. Across the Savart Singhi area, just very minimal movement down here. Grindavik northward, a couple smaller quakes. I don't see anything of any major interest that would tell me we're close to an eruption but I'm sure the inflation charts out here are going up uh, let's
Let's see here. Man, it's been a while since I've checked that out here. Where's our... Support Singy, here we go. Inflation chart going up. Of course, the last eruption, when was it? We didn't, we really had more of a migrational pattern of magma movement here during our last eruption. I think that was a month or two ago, a couple months ago. It moved a bunch of magma away from the area to the north. Uh, still going up, though. So it's an interesting little sequence of events. See what happens with this as we head into the future. But either way, inflation continuing there across the uh, Savart Singi area around the uh, Grindavik region and the Blue Lagoon, the power plant area. Still seeing a rise out there. As uh, far as Kilauea Volcano goes, get the latest information here. Uh, I'm patiently waiting episode 26. Episode 25 ended there uh, back on the uh, 11th of June. We're just going back up here in terms of the inflation data. Really nothing of change here. Rinse and repeat cycle looks very similar to the last 25 episodes there of eruption at Kilauea Volcano. Not quite there yet in terms of the eruption potential. Got, uh, oh, maybe another day or so, maybe a couple days here before we get to the level scene in the last couple of eruptions as far as a building up of magma below to produce that eruption at Kilauea Volcano. Space weather activity, well, that's a different story right now. Quite active uh, across the sun. Mainly one sunspot has been producing lots of sea flare activity, lots of M flare activity here in the last couple days as well. That's going to be 41, 14 here. Notice all those pepper dots. That's indicating quite a bit of complexity magnetically speaking there within that sunspot. Still looks quite complex. It is directly facing Earth. There was an M flare that popped off here this morning. Looks like that had a decent, uh, maybe a CME associated with that as well. Notice the thickness here. Instead of an impulsive event like this M flare, uh, this one is a little bit more drawn out, indicating that it possibly produced a CME. Uh, if it did, more likely be Earth directed. Uh, I was just checking out the Folks here at the Space Weather Prediction Center, this is about 30 minutes old, so let me double check here. They have not updated their um, their forecast here. They're not showing the CMEs that popped yesterday and the one this morning. They're showing a, uh, some older data from, well, that was a CME from a couple days ago, directed away from Earth. Earth here in the green. Uh, so I'll wait uh, here. He should put one out today with all the CMEs that have been somewhat Earth-directed. Uh, they should put out an updated forecast in terms of what to expect here for the auroras over the next few nights. Uh, good possibility we could see that increase due to the CMEs that have been uh, blasting off of 4114 there. So we still have decent X-flare potential. 30% chance there for an X-flare. That's a decent number. M-flare at 75% chance. Proton event is elevated as well. Waiting on a proton event here because it seems like when proton events come in, well, that's when the earthquake activity really, really kicks up. Right now, pretty calm conditions in the earthquake department as far as anything even above moderate levels go. I mean, a 5.0 is the largest quake in the last 24 hours. That's very low. Uh, so we'll watch that, see what happens. Really not too concerned here with this massive Corona hole. I know quite a few uh, sports pages and weather pages out here trying to fear monger this massive hole in the sun. Well, it's a massive Corona hole, but not in the whole terms of speaking, you know, that it's like a black hole. It's uh, basically high speed solar wind stream flowing from this area. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, is pointing south of the Earth's sun plane. Not really going to feel the effects of this high-speed solar wind stream at all. But we do have that uh, massive sunspot area that we got to watch here for some stronger flaring. 4114. No major roars in the forecast for now. Very minimal, very minimal conditions here across the auroras for the aurora forecast. As uh, far as any close approach asteroids, I know Apophis is coming up here in a couple years. I'll get into that uh, as we get closer. It's... Definitely an interesting asteroid for sure. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Oh, look at that one. Whoa, that's 1,200 foot stadium size asteroid. Hello, that thing is huge. 
Uh, we've got something like that coming into the planet. Well, that would be very, very bad news. That's been uh, tracked, though, fortunately, since 2003. Uh, if that were a 2025 number and they just discovered that, I'd be like, what? Who's paying attention out there? We're supposed to be observing these rocks out here. Uh, but anyway, yeah, since 2003, they've been tracking this stadium size 1,200 foot asteroid. Uh, fortunately for us, it's well over 3 million miles away from the planet, passing here June 22nd. But uh, that is a huge one there. A couple big ones out here. Um, this one's 220 that was newly discovered. Uh, but everything out here is, uh, oh, you know, a couple millions of miles away. That is good news. Nothing coming in within the close approach for now. All right, let's take a look here at the weather outlook today. See what we got going on from the Storm Prediction Center. Got uh, just a rinse and repeat cycle up there across the northern plains into Montana as well, Wyoming. Uh, mainly parked over some Nebraska area, it looks like. Some enhanced region. Uh, got uh, some tornado activity up there around Minnesota as well. Got 5% chance there. Wind and some hail threats out there today. Uh, really nothing big as far as any major tornado threats go. Just that 5%. But the wind and hail, yes, looks very likely uh, during some of those storms that fire up here this afternoon. They're probably already firing up. Let's see what we got. Pretty quiet out here across California for now. I mean, it's just going to be 93 degrees and boring. Um, South Dakota, yeah, I got a few storms firing up out there right now, but that's that looks very minimal. I'm sure once we get that daytime heating kicking up, it'll really kick up here and uh, produce those storms a little bit uh, faster than what we're seeing right now. Uh, nothing major coming in as far as the tropics go. I was looking at this last night. I don't see any hurricanes approaching the Gulf. That is good news, but uh, as we get deeper into summertime and hurricane season, that will be an item to watch here. There's only one tropical system out there in the eastern Pacific. That's uh, disturbance number one. 90% chance of cyclone formation here in the next seven days. So uh, That's it. Uh, the Atlantic quiet, central Pacific quiet, nothing being recorded or even possibly being recorded out there in the next seven days. Pretty quiet conditions prevailing. Seismograph stations all look offline. <laughs> Hopefully they come back. It's been intermittent here. I don't know what's going on with this program. It, it comes on. It goes off. Uh, looks like they may be having some issues here, but uh, at least they come on periodically here like that. I've updated my Java programs and all that stuff, but for whatever reason, uh, still having some issues out here with this system, but... At least they're working periodically. All right, real quick glance here at the earthquake map. Nothing, uh, nothing new. Nothing changed here. Like I say, well, kind of interesting. Uh, will be interesting to check the trimmer map here later this evening. See uh, if things kick up here across Cascadia. You know, these strike slip boundary zones normally add strain due southeast here, just in this general fashion. There's that one off the Blanco fracture zone to the east here. So we know strains transferring towards this region. Not a whole lot of activity on the Gorda Ridges here recently. I don't think we've had anything. Nothing in the spreading seafloor center out there. A little bit uh, closer to the Cascadia. Some on the Cascadia as well. But uh, we'll continue to watch it. You know, I, it's just a, it's one of those things here, folks, where we could see any activity, large movement across many different fault systems around the globe, here along the Pacific Northwest as well. The San Andreas Fault, a lot of time has passed. It's uh, Like I say, we've been living in some very quiet times, technically speaking, out here as far as large earthquakes go. Uh, but it's not always going to stay that way. Just got to be on guard and be prepared for some large activity. Like I say, it could happen anywhere. Have a good one. We will see you guys out here a little bit later uh, for the Monday night update. Unless something major happens, uh, we'll see you in between then, I guess. But uh, enjoy your Monday. Stay safe and uh, stay cool out there. If you're out here in the heat like I am, take care.